Welcome to the second best sleep hypnosis story ever. Please make yourself comfortable and close your eyes. Lying on a bed or a sofa would be ideal as the object of this exercise is for you to drift off into a long, sound, comfortable sleep while being entertained by a relaxing, peaceful story. Position your hands where they feel the most comfortable. This can be by your sides or folded anywhere on the front of your body. I only ask that you feel completely at ease with your choice. It is best if whatever position you choose to be in, your legs are uncrossed and your arms are not tightly folded. It doesn't matter if you feel the need to move slightly now and again. If you feel the need to adjust your position, cough, or scratch an itch, you will be able to do so and quickly return to a state of deep relaxation. You don't have to stay absolutely still for the entire audio. Just be comfortable and relax your body as much as you can before we begin. Begin by taking a deep breath in, holding it for a moment, then letting it out with a nice, long, slow exhale. Another deep cleansing breath in and allow your whole body to relax as you exhale. Keep your eyes comfortably closed. Focus on relaxing all the tiny muscles around your eyes. Keep relaxing them until your eyelids feel very, very heavy and your eyes feel most comfortable staying shut. Feel your eyelids melting into the tops of your cheeks and keep listening quietly to the sound of my voice. You will be aware of other sounds as well. You may hear sounds from inside or outside your home. You may even become aware of sounds from inside your own body. None of these will disturb you. These sounds may help you to relax. For now, all these sounds are unimportant to you. For now, the only one sound you are interested in is the sound of my voice because you would like to go to sleep and enjoy a story. While you are listening to the sound of my voice, I would like you to turn your attention inward and focus on your breathing. Breathe slowly and evenly, deeply and softly. I would like you to breathe for a moment the way you would breathe if you were trying to convince someone you were completely asleep. As you breathe deeply and softly, allow your body to relax a little more with each breath. As your body relaxes more and more deeply with each breath, with each long, slow, soft breath, you feel your entire body sink a little deeper into the bed and your body feels a little heavier with each long, deep, slow, soft breath. In a moment, you are going to go into a trance that will relax your body and your mind. This will be a very pleasant feeling that you will enjoy. You have already begun this process. You can bring yourself out of it anytime you choose and be awake and alert. You don't have to do anything. It will just happen easily and naturally as long as you follow my instructions. For now, just lay back and relax. Take a deep breath in and just let it out. Take another deep breath 
and focus again on relaxing the little muscles around your eyes. As you relax your eyelids, allow the rest of your body to relax a little deeper as well. Focus on your shoulders, arms and hands. Just let them fall loose and floppy. That's right. Good job. As you are relaxing, you can move your attention back to your eyes. Become aware again of all the tiny little muscles around your eyes. Feel how relaxed they can be. Feel your eyelids melting onto your upper cheeks. You could open them if you wanted to, but as long as you keep that relaxation there, your eyelids will become so relaxed, so tired, so heavy, that you do not want to open them. When you know you have relaxed your eyes, and you know you do not want to open them, and you do not want to try, you will feel as if your upper eyelashes have melted onto your cheeks. You could try to open them if you wanted to, but you prefer to let them rest. You can stop thinking about them and enjoy your feelings of relaxation getting deeper and deeper. You can become aware of many aspects of your relaxation. You can imagine relaxation spreading throughout your entire body. You can feel it sweeping from the top of your head to the tips of your toes. You can feel it like a wave of relaxation, like a wave of letting go. Relax and let go of every muscle in your body. As you do this, you can feel yourself drifting deeper and deeper into the soft darkness. You can deepen this feeling even more if you would like as deep as you are now, you can still go deeper. As deep as you are now, you can still go deeper. In a moment, I am going to ask you to focus on your eyelids again. When you do, and when I ask you to, you will go many times deeper into a trance. You can feel how relaxed all the little muscles around your eyelids are and you can feel your upper eyelashes melting onto your cheeks. Your eyelids feel heavy, so tired and heavy, you don't even want to try to open them. Allow them to relax and stay closed. Go deeper now. That's right, go deeper now. Good job. Now it is time for your story. You are sitting on the front deck of your cabin in the mountains. You're sitting on your usual wooden chair alone. You are enjoying the view. The sun is setting, turning the sky to fire over the mountains in the distance. Down in the valley, the cars and trucks are going back and forth on the little two-lane highway. The air is warm and dry. There is a slight breeze stirring the pine trees around the edges of your yard and some small birds, brightly colored, interesting birds, fly out of the trees to squabble over something in the grass. You are waiting for the sun to go down. In your bedroom, on the dresser, is a black glass ball about the size of a bowling ball. Last night, this ball showed you some magic that took you on an amazing adventure across the universe. You are hoping tonight you can go on another adventure. You have already brought the ball out in the daylight, but nothing special happened. The ball remained quite ordinary in the sunlight. As the sky is fading to a deep, dark blue studded with large, bright, twinkling stars, you wish for night time and hope that is when the magic will happen again to the left and the right of the small dirt road that leads from your cabin to the highway 
are cow pastures inhabited by tawny yellow cows and their calves. As the last of the light fades, you see them on both sides. They are choosing a corner to gather together in and bed down for the night. The pasture to the right is larger and contains an anomaly. Right in the center of it is a large, steep hill that doesn't look natural in its surroundings. It is about ten stories high, cone-shaped, and flat on the very top. The grass on and around this hill is much longer than the grass on the pasture around it. The cows will not graze within fifty feet of it. It is dark now, and not much can be seen outside of the soft yellow glow of your porch light besides the headlights on the highway going back and forth. You go into your cabin and into your bedroom, and there it is, just where you have left it, sitting on the old-fashioned ceramic basin. Beside the pitcher is your black glass ball. You carefully lift it out, noticing how it doesn't really weigh anything at all. You bring it out to your front deck and begin to run your hands over its smooth, almost oily feeling surface. You are expecting it to glow again, but it doesn't. Just like in the daytime, nothing is really happening to it. You place the ball on the wooden planks of your deck and return to your chair to think. You are pondering what it is that is different tonight from last night. You take yourself back to the moment you first saw this unusual thing and remember how you felt perfectly calm and at peace. You compare this to this evening and realize you feel a little anxious and on edge. You feel slightly impatient and you are pushing, trying to force something to happen. You decide to see how relaxed you can make yourself. You close your eyes and take a deep breath in and then exhale, imagining all the stress and tension leaving your body. As you do, you focus on your breathing breathing slowly and deeply. In your mind, you leave the ball to take care of itself for now and allow your mind to rest. You quietly listen to your own breathing and the night sounds around you as inside yourself you sink deeper and deeper into a soft, dark, quiet, peaceful place. You do this for a short time just at the moment when you feel the most blissfully and peacefully still, you slowly open your eyes and see the ball glowing with a soft blue light. You reach for it, but as you do, it floats away from you and across your front yard. You follow it as it floats down your driveway and along the dirt road. It is glowing very brightly now and traveling too fast for you to keep up. You watch it as you walk along the dirt road and it floats up to the top of the strange hill in the pasture. It begins to glow brightly, brightly enough to light up all the scenery around it. You climb over the old wooden split rail fence and walk across the stubbly, chewed down grass. When you get to the bottom of the hill, you see it is very steep and you have to grab handfuls of the grass. In your hands you take the long, thick, hardy grass to help pull yourself up. After a few feet, you feel something unusual. As you climb the hill, it is becoming more and more effortless. It becomes so easy 
It feels as if some force is lifting you up the hill and you don't really need to use your hands and feet anymore. Eventually your hands and feet are having difficulty keeping up and you are so focused on them you reach the top of the hill and almost bump head first into the glowing orb. At the last moment you pull yourself back and sit on your behind in the long dry grass shielding your eyes from the glare. The bright light dims and you are able to look directly at it again. It is glowing pink now and as you gaze into it you see tiny sparks of white light floating around inside of it. You find this thing intensely beautiful and as you look deep into the center of it it seems very very large inside. You know this makes no sense because on the outside it is still no larger than a bowling ball. Yet just the same when you stare into it, it appears to go on forever. It is also making a strange sound. It is a sound you cannot hear, but you know it is there. Again, this makes no sense, but you just know it is making a sound, and this sound is the most beautiful sound you have never heard. The ball sinks down to rest softly in front of you in the long grass a couple of feet in front of you. You move the grass aside and place your hand on the smooth oily surface of it and begin rubbing it softly and slowly in circles. At first you think it is growing larger again, but soon you realize the ball isn't growing larger you are getting smaller. You get up on your knees and continue rubbing the ball as you watch your hand shrink and the rest of your body with it until your hand looks like a little baby's hand. This continues until the glowing pink orb is level with your line of sight. You wonder how small you are going to get as you stand up and your hand slides down under the equator of the ball. You are reaching up and walking towards the bottom of it, now slowly careful to keep your footing on the uneven ground in a forest of giant grass. Once the pink ball looms massive above you, you stop shrinking and are left standing in an alien ancient forest with trees big enough to drive cars through, growing out of formidably rough and uneven spongy terrain. As you gaze into the pink forever in the ball, the little sparks of light floating within it seem much larger now and one of them is coming straight towards you. It presses against the glass, slightly ahead of you, just above your head. You reach out to touch it, and your hand disappears into the light for a moment before you pull it away. You look at your hand, and it looks okay, so you try again with both hands. You sink your hands into the light, almost up to your elbows, and feel around in there to see what you can feel. At first you feel nothing. Then your forearm bumps into something that seems like an edge. You explore further and can feel the light is making a hole in the bubble large enough for you to climb through. You take hold of the edges and pull yourself up. As you do, you get the same feeling you had while climbing the hill. You feel as if something is lifting you up through the hole. You pull yourself up to waist level and kick a leg over the side. As you pull the other leg up and get yourself situated in a comfortable seated position, you are still somewhat dazzled by the light and unable to see clearly what you are getting yourself into. This effect only lasts for a moment, 
Then you feel yourself beginning to slide down and you feel something very wet on your behind. The light clears and you find yourself slowly sliding down a very long winding water slide that ends at a large pond in the valley below. The slide itself is very smooth and carved out of the rough gray granite of the mountain you are traveling down. You are not moving very fast. Sometimes in the tight corners you have to give yourself a little push to speed yourself up. You enjoy traveling down the mountain this way. The stone and the little stream of water that runs through it are very warm and comfortable. You are moving fast and easy enough to make the ride fun and interesting, yet not so fast as to make it difficult for you to take in and enjoy the scenery of where it is you are going. You see you are headed towards a beautiful, peaceful, still valley far below you. You see the water slide snaking this way and that for a long way down the mountain, so you will have plenty of time to enjoy the view. The large pond or small lake that is your destination looks dark and placid and is surrounded by a lovely white sand beach. The beach gives way to green grass and then dense forest. The forest grows up the huge mountains surrounding the valley for some time. Then it thins, revealing jagged gray rock like the stone you are sliding down right now. These mountains are snow-capped, with great white icy spires piercing the occasional fluffy white clouds that are wandering by. This could be the most beautiful of normal earth scenery, but there are two distinct differences. The sky is not blue. It is the same shade of pretty pink as the outside of the orb you think you may still be inside of. Another thing that is different and you find interesting are the lights. What originally appeared to you as tiny sparks inside an orb the size of a bowling ball now look like bowling ball sized glowing orbs themselves. They are all glowing white and you can see about a dozen of them floating around the valley from where you are now sliding down the mountain. You are not sure if they are wandering aimlessly or traveling with a purpose and a direction. The groove you are traveling in is straightening out and as you begin your final descent into the lake, on the final straight few yards you accelerate a little bit, then arrive with a soft swoosh and float out into the warm water. The water is very deep and you can't touch the bottom, but you do not feel yourself sinking. You begin to swim across diagonally to the nearest shore that is not gray cliff face and giant granite boulders. As you swim, you again feel as if you are being helped. You are floating lightly and easily, and each stroke takes you farther across the lake, faster than it normally would, with very little effort. Soon your feet are able to find the soft sandy bottom, and you come out of the water soaking wet and grateful for the warm wind you know will dry you quickly. You have not seen any signs of human life here so far, so if you would like, you may remove some or all of your clothing, and you may hang it up to dry on a nearby bush, or you can leave all of your clothing on if you would prefer. Either way, when you sit on the grass at the edge of the beach, you notice the warm wind feels wonderful and is doing its job of drying you and your clothes very well. As you search the sky for a sun, you find it is strange you don't see one. 
The sky seems to be emitting a uniform light over its entire surface. The light pink that it was is turning to a deeper shade as the light is dimming. The glowing balls traveling around the valley appear to be getting brighter to compensate. Your clothes are dry now and you think it would be nice to explore your new world. You walk up a gently sloping grassy incline towards the forest and are impressed by these very large old trees. They are broadleaf trees, but you can't quite figure out exactly what kind of trees they are. As you get closer, you see the forest floor is mossy and even, so you will be able to walk into it without looking for a path. You are also delighted to see some smaller versions of the glowing orbs wandering amongst the tree trunks, dispelling the gloom and making the forest look even more inviting. The sky is turning a deep purple now, but there is light enough to see inside and outside the forest, for all the orbs have become so bright it bothers the eyes to look directly at them. You walk into the forest and breathe softly and deeply in through your nose and like the smell. You smell moss and wood and if you really smell for it, you can also smell flowers. There are patches of red and white flowers here and there on the forest floor. They have a wonderful light clean scent. You are beginning to feel tired and wonder where would be the best place to rest? You don't like the idea of sleeping outside, but you think it might be nice to find somewhere to just rest for a little time. Ahead is a large mossy fallen log and you plan to use that as a backrest or even a bed if need be. But before you get there, there is a toad about the size of a small dog. It climbs out from behind it and climbs on top of it. You stop approximately 10 feet from it and check it out for a moment as it just sits there staring dumbly at you. It doesn't look dangerous. Then it says, Rabbit. More of a word than a croak. It seems as if he said it on purpose, as if that was what he was expected to say. You look into its motionless and expressionless face and feel as if you may be reading too much into this because you are beginning to get the impression this toad has an attitude. You back away and turn around, thinking the beach may be a better choice for a resting place. The sky has faded to black and it is now night time. You can see well enough with the light from the smaller orbs floating amongst the trees, but the light from them keeps shifting and moving and everything looks so different now. You soon realize you are lost and don't know in which direction the beach lies. One small ball of light that is just a little bigger than the others and is glowing slightly pink, comes to rest a few feet in front of you on the forest floor. When you go to pick it up, it flits up into the air and dances away from you. You chase after it and very soon come to an understanding that no matter how fast you move, it will always stay the same distance away from you. You slow down and settle into a leisurely pace as you follow this ball. It winds through the tree trunks, not seeming to be taking the quickest or best route anywhere. Up ahead, you see a yellow light hanging there, still in the darkness. As a light spark moves closely over it, you see it as a porch light on a cabin. 
What is very strange is this is the same cabin you left behind back in the mountains at home. It even has the same wooden chair sitting on the front deck. You are so happy to see it because you have grown very, very tired and would like so very much to go to bed. When you open your front door and go in, everything is just as you have left it except in the bedroom. When you look in your bedroom, the light is dim, but not so dark you cannot see what is in there. There is a faint gray light filtering through the curtains as you look around. The first thing you notice is there is someone in your bed. A closer inspection confirms your suspicion that this person is you. You watch yourself breathing deeply and evenly, slowly and softly. You glance towards your dresser and see, sitting on top of it, the ceramic basin with its matching pitcher sitting inside of it, just as it was in the beginning before your adventure began. You feel a little envious of yourself who is sleeping in your bed because you are feeling so tired and so, so very sleepy. You just want to go to bed and go to sleep now. When you reach down to pull back the covers, they do not move. They feel soft to the touch, but they also feel as if they were made of iron. You try to gently move your head and get the same type of feeling. You can feel your hair but it doesn't move either. Neither does your head. You continue to sleep and the gentle rhythm of your breathing carries on undisturbed. You sit down on the side of your bed, bow your head, and close your eyes. You begin to breathe along with your sleeping self until the sound of your breathing and the sound of the breathing of your sleeping self are one and the same. You feel yourself drifting off to sleep behind your closed eyelids. Slowly and softly, you feel the sensation of yourself sinking deeply, gently backwards, deeper and deeper into sleep. You enjoy this feeling, so you relax and allow yourself to fall deeper and deeper into it. As you feel yourself breathing softly and deeply, you also become aware of how comfortable your bed is and how soft your covers are. You have now almost become your sleeping self. There is still a small part of yourself that is still awake and can still hear my voice. It can also hear you snore softly. That part of you is like a tiny ember left after a fire has gone out. It gets smaller and smaller until it winks out and you are deeply and soundly asleep. As relaxed as you are now, you can still go many times deeper into sleep. Now it is time for you to go into a very very deep sleep until it is time for you to wake up. I will count backwards from 20 in a moment. After each number you will go deeper and deeper. The deeper you go, the better you will feel. After each number you will feel yourself going deeper and deeper and your mind will become more relaxed and more at ease. And as this happens, you will go deeper still into a lovely state of deep sleep. Starting now, I will begin to count. Twenty, deeper and deeper. Nineteen, as I count, these numbers relax you more and more. Eighteen, allow these numbers to take you deeper and deeper. Seventeen, deeper and deeper. 16, 15, 14, 
13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Good night.